Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Ivan here. Hope you're good. I am back. Yes, I took yesterday off. And no, I don't do that very often. And yes, I enjoyed it. And no, I won't do it today. And yes, from time to time you need a day off. And no, it's not a bad thing. I suggest and recommend it for everyone. Everyone should do it from time to time. All right, guys. Welcome in. Here we are, and here we go. Today is a technical class. Today is a fade cutting class. We haven't talked about this in a bit. Got some things we want to dig in on. Got some things we want to share. I'm excited to be here with you this morning, and thank you so much for joining in with me and for joining us. Let me get to the page on Facebook so that I've got the monitoring up. There we go. It's working. You can see me, I can see you. We, I can't see you, but I know you're here. Uh, we are here, so uh, good morning everybody, welcome in. Gonna be a beautiful day here in Chicago. Gonna be a warm and wonderful 87 sunny degrees. And this morning to get things started, I'm right here with you inside kicking it off. We always kick it off with $100,000 hair cutter. You know, it is June and in June, I have made it a tradition to spend every single day in June talking about July 1 Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. If you haven't been part of the conversation, if you haven't been watching the videos, please know I post a video every single day on Instagram Live. It's on IG Live, and I also post it over to IG. So if you miss it live, you don't miss it. You get to watch it on IGTV. Uh, forever. There's a playlist there. Today is June 17. We talk about something different every day. We count down 14 days, two weeks until July 1, Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. And I've been hearing from so many of you, and I'm so happy that so many of you, as you're going back to work, as your states are opening up, as you're getting busier, again, and getting busy, um, Many of you, many of you are going back at a higher price. When we go back, we go up as the hashtag that I created at the very beginning of the coronavirus lockdown, shutdown, lockup uh, for our industry. When we go back, we go up. Uh, for all the reasons why when we go back, we go up was the conversation. And again, I'm so thrilled that everyone seems to be uh, going that route. So congratulations to those of you that are back those of you that are up, those of you that are taking a price increase, and congratulations to those of you that are going up on July 1. So let's get started while we're talking about the date. It is June 17. Let's turn to June 17. June 17, day 168 of the year with 197 days remaining in the year. June 17's tip is offer free neck cleanup or don't kind of suggestion is that? Do this or don't do this? Well, it's about having a conversation. And now, more than ever, conversations are an important part of what's going on in our nation and amongst all of us. Offer free neck cleanup or don't. Let's have a conversation. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about what we call tweener services. Tweener services are services that are delivered in between a regular haircut. So a tweener might be a neckline cleanup. In a lady's haircut situation, a tweener might be a bang trim. That's a tweener service. A tweener might be cleaning up ears and eyebrows, nose hair. Uh, nose hair we're not doing right now because of COVID concerns, but we'll get back to that down the road. Um, so the question is the issue of whether these tweener services are free for current customers or whether you charge for them. And I think the answer is you do one or the other, but you can't really do both. And I think it depends on the type of business that you're running in terms of your marketing and certainly as a reflection of your pricing. And where you live will determine what the magic number is on the price for this. But I think there is a magic number and there is a price. And what I'm trying to say is there's a price at which tweeners should be included. Hey, you're a regular customer of ours. You're in the books. I know who you are. You're a regular. You come in all the time. You need your neck cleaned up between haircuts. You're not ready for a haircut, but you got a wedding this weekend. You're not ready for a haircut, but you got something going on. You want me to clean up your neck? No problem. 
no charge. Get in here, sit down, let's get it done. That's a free tweener. And there is a business model and there is a business situation in which I absolutely believe the tweeners should be free. That being said, there's also a situation in which I absolutely believe that the tweener should be something you charge for. Don't give anything away. We see people all the time saying, oh, I'm not giving away bang trims. If I give it away, I undervalue it in the eyes of my customer. Pretty soon they're going to want everything for free and they don't think it's worth any money. And you know what? Those people with those conversations are absolutely correct. There's a, there's a price point. I might venture to guess or to say in my area, and this is just my area, within my community, the price point is maybe $25 to $28. That if your haircut is 25 to 28 or more, tweener services should probably be free. But if your haircut is 25 to 28 or less, you should probably be charging for your tweeners. Now, it may not necessarily be based only on the price. It may be based on the, the service level you seek to provide, the nature of your town or community. I think there's more than, it's not a black and white issue. It's not a yes or no. It's not a, it's, it's not a, uh, what's the word I want to look for? It's not a um, on or off. What's that word in the computer world that I'm looking for? Um, that it's, it's either, uh, you know, a one or a zero uh, digitally, you know, that there is no gray area or middle ground. I, I, we're not there. Um, you'll come up with the word. You'll remind me what that binary. Boom. That's the word I was looking for. It's not a binary issue. I think there's quite a bit of room for interpretation uh, on this, but I think the conversation as a business as an individual, if you're an owner or a suite renter of, are we charging for our tweeners or are we giving our tweeners away? I think the most important thing to come out of June 17 here as a topic and a conversation is let's not let it be an accident. Let's not let it be an afterthought. Let's not let it be a, yeah, whatever. Let's make sure that we've gotten out in front of it. We've looked at it, we've thought about it, we've deliberately come up with an answer so that we can, in a uniform way, execute as we need to for that subject. So, the question of tweeners, neck cleanups, bang trims, ears, eyebrows, little in-between touch-ups, just check my sideburns. You know, as soon as we start fading and tapering, and today's class is fading, as soon as we start fading and tapering, dude, it's a haircut. No, no, don't play games with me, dude. That's a haircut. Let's charge for a haircut because we're doing a haircut. I think everybody understands that. So that's your hundred thousand dollar haircut or tip of the day. Please, if you don't already order it and own a copy of the book, go online and get a copy of the book. Get a copy at Amazon. Get a copy at Ivanzoot.com. That's hundred thousand dollar haircutter. As you're getting back to work, some of us are in a rebuilding mode. Clients may have wandered off. Some clients may not be enthusiastic about coming back yet. You're always in a building mode, but if you recognize you're in a building mode, 100 by 100, that's 100 new haircut customers in 100 days, guaranteed. Get a copy, paper or digital. There's a two pack with these guys both together if you want them. This is a focused program. One idea a day, every single day, 100 days. Any day can be day one, 99 days later, 100 new haircut customers, guaranteed. And you guys know about big and bigger. If you're an owner, if you're a manager, if you're a suite renter, if you yourself understand and recognize that you yourself are fundamentally responsible for your long-term success in the beauty and barber industry, these guys are your friends, big and bigger big and bigger. Year one, year two. Weeks one through 52, 53 through 104. Two years, 104 weeks of solid, how do I build my business? Marketing, support, education, information. Get them as a two pack or buy them one at a time, but get them and get started. Any week can be week one. These don't start in January. You can start tomorrow. Order your books. All right. Fades. Let's get into fades. Fading. There was a time when you only wore a tight faded haircut if you were 
uh, conscripted into our military service supporting our country. There was a time. Fades were exclusive to high and tight tapered haircuts on military personnel. That is certainly no longer the case. I think I can confidently state that fades are never going to go away. We are always going to be fading customers' haircuts. There will always be a portion of the population that's looking for a fade. And we, haircut professionals, want to be comfortable and confident in executing good, solid fade work. Uh, fades run across the social spectrum. Fades run across the geographic and demographic spectrum. Fades run across the age spectrum for clients. There are plenty of women, and I cut quite a few in the shop, that wear short, tight, tapered, faded haircuts. They absolutely qualify as fade haircuts. So we can't pigeonhole this as a gender-related uh, or gender-exclusive topic either. Let's start out by talking about the definition of fading. What is fading? Fading is a form of graduation. Graduation is a form of length progression. I'm going to get a couple of mannequins out here as some props. I got two. I'm going to grab one more while we're talking. Hang on a second. What do we got? Well, we got this guy. This guy is a flat top from some classes a while back. And this is absolutely a horseshoe flat top. Got what we call a landing strip. And it's basically a zero on the back and sides. This is definitely faded up. This is definitely faded across the top. There's a lot of fade behavior going on on this haircut. This guy here has been our shave model for some of our shave classes. He's got about a number two and a half-ish on top. And he's faded in through the back and sides. Dude's definitely a fade model. It's a form of graduation. It's a length progression. Characterized by the idea that we are moving from a very, very short length up into longer hair. This right here. Would you call this guy a fade? Probably not. This guy is what we call a taper. He's tapered up. It's still a form of graduation. A fade and a taper are both graduated haircuts. Graduation in which we move through a length progression from the perimeter up into the interior. You know, when I was a beauty school student a long, long, long time ago, um, we, when I was in school, we were trying to come up with memory aids, things to help us remember terminology, things to help us remember key elements of, of the haircutting we were working on. And to remember graduation, what is graduation? Because we have layering, this top is layered, and we have graduation. They define graduation as a stacked effect in the ends of the hair. I think that's great. Graduation is a stacked effect in the ends of the hair. The way I remembered it was when you go to a graduation, all of the diplomas are stacked up on the table on the stage, a stacked effect in the ends of the hair. So that length progression right there is graduation. We see that stacking effect. We certainly see it here. But I don't think anybody would call this, probably wouldn't call it a taper, but probably wouldn't call this a fade. So let's, let's finalize our definitions here. All faded haircuts are tapered, but not all tapered haircuts are fades. Does that make sense? All faded haircuts are a form of tapering, but not all tapered haircuts, these are both tapered haircuts, but they're not both fades. So all faded haircuts are tapers, but not all tapered haircuts are fades. Just want to pop in on our comments. Good morning. Missed me yesterday. Brandon, thank you. Glad to be back. Uh, West Palm, Florida, Christian checking in. Good to have you. Bill's Barbershop. You know, my family's got a house down in Wellington in Palm Beach County. And when I get down there to visit next time, it's starting to sound like I'm going to need to get into Bill's Barbershop to get me a haircut. So I'm going to make a note of that and plan for that down the road. So let's come up with some terminology here to define the conversation between fades and tapers. And I think these two mannequins really make it easy for us 
to see those differences. While clients will choose the language that they choose, and I don't think we can control what a client chooses to call a haircut. That's a function of consultation skill, learning how to listen, and knowing how to understand what it is a client wants. And I've done classes on consultation. We'll do another one coming up because uh, I think it's an, a very important conversation to be engaged in. Um, let's explain what I believe are the differences between a fade and a taper. Fade, taper. Generally speaking, tapered haircuts are going to be, and I'm, look at these two mannequins as I say this. Generally speaking, tapered haircuts, remember this is your taper, this is your fade. Tapered haircuts are longer in length. Tapered haircuts are darker in overall finish, meaning scalp exposure, darker, longer, darker, and tapered haircuts happen lower. The faded transition, and on a real mannequin, on a real head, we'd feather in the bottom there, happens lower down the head. So tapered haircuts, longer, darker, and lower. Conversely, faded haircuts are going to be shorter, they're going to be lighter in overall finish, meaning a greater degree of scalp exposure, shorter, lighter, and higher because they're both a form of graduation and all tapered, all faded haircuts are tapers, but not all tapered haircuts are fades. Does that help you guys with the definitions? Throw me some love, throw me a thumb, throw me an acknowledgement. If those terms and the way I've laid them out help you to understand some of the basic language and difference from fading to tapering, throw me a thumb. All right, that'll cover some of that. Now, Let's move on just a little bit and let's talk about the money, the money associated with faded haircuts because I don't want to just be that educator and not picking on anybody. Well, we got lots of haircut educators that when they say we're going to do a fade, they rip out the clipper and they start taking hair off. Well, I'm not going there just yet. Fades don't take long to cut. We have more than enough time to cut our fade haircut, but I want to spend the time to talk about some other aspects of fading. So we started with definitions. The next thing I want to move into is finance, pricing. You guys got to charge more for these fades. We've got to get our fade prices up. You know, I saw somebody post recently about pricing in their barber shop, and they were talking about the fact that their faded haircuts were a higher price than their one-level haircuts. And I thought I understood what they were talking about, but I wanted to make sure. I wanted to double check. So I reached out. Fades were a certain price and one levels were another. What do you mean by one level? That's like a three guard even all over and line and edge. Three guard even all over and line and edge. Well, that's a much quicker haircut than a fade would be. That's a much simpler haircut to execute than a fade would be. And I can see and understand a world in which that would be a less expensive haircut than a fade would be. So I can totally understand why you want to might have separate pricing for that. I can also totally understand why a fade haircut could be and should be positioned as more expensive uh, pr and because it's more time consuming, because it's more technically involved, because it's going to dictate uh, a higher, stronger, better uh, skill set. I, I see no problem with that at all. So I think you got to look at your menu and have a conversation about where and how are we maybe pricing some of these things so that they make sense. The other thing I think you want to factor in, but I don't want to see this adversely affect your pricing. And too often I think people go here or go there, and that is fade customers tend to be frequent customers. I've said this for many years, the shorter you work, 
the more you encourage clients to wear their hair shorter and the shorter you take your customers, the more money you're going to make. Short hair makes more money. Short hair is one of the big secrets to making money in our business because short hair comes back faster. When I wear my hair short, tight and faded, I might get a haircut every 10 days to two weeks. Short hair comes back faster. I can turn them faster in the chair, but I also need fewer customers to be busy. If I have a hundred customers who come in every two weeks and I can cut a hundred a week, I got half my customer base nailed with a hundred customers. Typically the magic number for customers in our business is 380 to 420. That you need 380 to 420 active customers in your client database that are actively utilizing you as their hair cutter in order for you to truly be busy. But if you're cutting faded haircuts, you can be twice as busy with half as many people. But that's not an argument for charging less for the fades. That's not an argument for discounting those haircuts. So I think that's an important piece of pricing. The next thing I want to talk about, and I want to clean my glasses, but I want to take my glasses off to talk about the next subject because I need to be able to get to my head. And that is when we talk about fading, I think it's very important that we stop and pause and talk about making sure we're getting our product dollars, our dollars associated with take home hair care product. Guys, you gotta be getting your dollars out of your fade customers. First of all, if you're good at fades and you're building a big business of a lot of fade work, this is the majority of your customers. If your fades aren't buying take home, nobody's buying take home. And you've got to get your take home dollars in order for you and your business to be successful, healthy, and profitable. So there's two things I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about your scalp and your scalp health and scalp care and then I want to talk about hair. Now obviously shampoo and conditioner. You know when we're wearing faded haircuts this is a taper. This is the guy that we're gonna fade. We're gonna take him short but none of this hair, if this was a human, none of this hair, the top of his hair is an inch and a quarter. The long hair here at the front that might be an inch and a half. Everything else is less than half an inch. That means there's no hair on this guy that is more than three months old. Three months ago, not a single one of these hairs were present. So there's not a lot of opportunity for conditioner. It's hard to sell conditioner with the argument, my hair's not old. I don't keep my hair long enough for it to become old or damaged. You know, when we see uh, ladies, long haired clients of any gender with hair down to here, some of that hair is six years old. It sprouted out of their head six years ago. Obama was still president when they grew that hair. Okay, and that's a long, feels like a long time ago. Every single hair on this head grew after we got locked out. Feels like it's much more recent. Conditioner, kind of a tough sell. Shampoo, piece of cake. A lot of fade customers are going to be more active. They don't have any problem getting dirty and sweating. They're just going to jump in the shower. They're just going to shower it out. So number one, sell a boatload of shampoo to your fade customers. Get that hair clean, get in the shower, scrub it up, start over. I want to talk about After Buzz. After Buzz is my advanced formula scalp care product. If you haven't used this, if you haven't tried this, I'm going to challenge you. Go online, go to my website, get a bottle of After Buzz, and start playing with this stuff. This is advanced formula scalp care. It took me 10 years to get this product right. And now that we got it right, we really got it right. This is a product that you use in the shop at the time you cut their hair. It's also a product you send them home with to use at home. You put this directly on the client, directly on the fade. Now I'm getting faded up later today. Later this morning, I'm getting my hair cut here in the house. My kid cuts it for me now, taught him how to cut a flat top. We're going to skin this out and flatten it up. I'm overdue. But we take this directly to the scalp at the time that you cut hair because 
when you're done cutting hair, especially a fade, when we've got the blade and we've got the guards directly on the head, clipper over comb on the head, we're scratching, we're scraping, we're rubbing, we're in contact, we're irritating, the scalp is red and it's hot and it's itching and it's uncomfortable. Ah. This feels so good. You put a little bit of this on, you put a little bit of this in, and you work it right in, right on top of the hair, right on top of the tight fade, right into the skin and the scalp. It moisturizes the hair, it hydrates the scalp, it reduces redness, it reduces irritation, it cools the skin, it feels nice, it smells good. Two biggies now. It sanitizes the scalp. If your hair cutter hasn't been really, really good about keeping the tools clean, there's an extra measure of help here because we're sanitizing the scalp with this and we're preventing ingrown hairs. Because when we're fading tight, especially on curlier textures, on kinky and curly hair, when we're fading tight, we can get some irritation in the short, tight areas. We can get some ingrown hairs, folliculitis, things like that. And after buzz will help prevent that as well. So we talked shampoo, we talked scalp and skin care, and we talked uh, fade care. Now let's talk about the whole top half of the head. Different people have different preferences for styling product. I have always been a gel guy. I love hair gel. I'm a product of the 80s. I'm a boomer. In the 80s, man, I fell in love with my hair gel. I've never stopped. I love hair gel. Today, a lot of guys much prefer something in this category, in the pucks, whether it's a wax or a paste or a pomade. Different consistencies, different textures, different feels, different styled finished looks. We have matte versus uh, lightly shiny. We have dry look versus wet look. We have um, soft hold versus uh, a little bit more pliable versus, of course, firm hold. Um, but styling products, there isn't a fade out there that you're ever going to cut that should be let out the door when you're done without some form of styling product to finish it off. So, start with shampoo, move into scalp and skin care, finish it off with styling product. There's plenty of, no shortage of selling opportunities for products tied to your fade customers. So, what have we covered? We covered definitions, we covered pricing, we covered retailing. How about cutting? Ready to cut? Let's cut. Now, I am not going to get up here and tell you there's only one way to do this. I'm going to tell you there are as many ways to fade as there are clients getting fades and as there are people cutting them. Lots of options, lots of choices. I do want to cover a couple things. Have you guys seen Fade Comb? Fade Comb's pretty cool. Check it out. It's a four and a three and a two and a one and a zero. It's a fade. It's a tapered comb. Now, some might argue it's not close enough and short enough to really be a fade. I don't know. That bottom there is a sixteenth. That's a zero. That's a fade. And how does this comb work? Unlike my zoot comb as a clipper comb that you're going to hold by the handle and control, this one's got your stubby little handle, and you're going to hold it vertically. You're going to come in above it. And look what we got. We got that, per look at that, that perfect length transition. Now, before we go there, before we go to fade comb, and I'm going to fade comb in this whole thing so you can see how it works. I'm a big believer in cut the top first. Cut the top first. Get your top down because when we fade up from below, and, fade, and I'm not going to do this, but when we fade up from below, we create lines, we create marks, we create steps or demarcations. And then what do we have to do? We have to work very, very hard to take the lines out. I always say, and it's right here on my bookmark, 
I'm going to zoom in on it there. I don't know if the camera focuses on that right there or not, but what does it say? This is the blue side of the bookmark. It says, if you don't put the line in, you don't got to take the line out. A little bit of words of wisdom to fade by. Let's stop putting lines in. Cutting the top first will be really helpful for that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put my number four guard on my zoot comb. Notice how that worked. I take my four guard, and if you look on the back, it's a four, it's 13 millimeters, it's half an inch. I take the two chiseled or beveled teeth on the zoot comb, just like you put a guard on a clipper. I snap it in and down and click it in. And it's flush right there. The tab doesn't stick out past the surface of the comb. It lets me come in and cut clipper over comb. And everybody always asks, guys, that's a JRL 1040. Uh, you guys know I love my JRL 1090. Uh, that's the other clipper from JRL that I've been using a lot. Uh, JRL just introduced a new clipper, and mine is on the way. I should have it before the end of the week, and I will be featuring it uh, in an unboxing video, and I'll be featuring it in a uh, class next week for sure as soon as I get my little hands on it but I'm coming here with my zoot comb and my four guard and I'm cutting clipper over comb with that guard in place and look how easy this makes it for me to work my way through and round the head we're going to use a couple of fun tools here Certainly, we're starting off the day with our zoot comb. Now, one other tool that you may find you like, and the zoot comb, I'm using it with a four guard. I'm using it with a four guard. You do know that the zoot comb comes with a two and a three and a four. The comb is a one and you get a two and a three and a four. We've got those included in there for you. I put that four guard on. Remember lefties, love my lefties, you can flip that around, put it on the other side and use it with the other hand. It is totally reversible. One of the other tools as far as cutting through the top like this that some people really enjoy using is our curved comb. Our curved comb is a curved comb. It is a comb that is curved. Now, you've seen me before cut tapered work on the inside of the curve of a curved comb, especially coming in here like behind the ear. How easy and crazy convenient can that be? That's awesome. That's the inside of the curve. But if we flip it around, we can play on the outside of the curve. Check this out. Look how easy it is to do interior layering to blend up and into. Let's tighten this guy up. He's wiggling bad today. Okay. Look how nicely that works. Look how beautifully that blends. Look how easy that is to do. That's your curved comb, okay? So we looked at zoot comb, we looked at curved comb. Let's use our fade comb. I want to fade in this entire perimeter with our fade comb. So we come in with the fade comb, and we're going to use the fade comb vertically. Now, if I've picked that as my height point, I want to be consistent with that as I move around the head. I'm going to hold that fade comb from below, but if this is the point where I am going to ride my one eighth, my number one, I have to ride that number one there all the way around the head. I can't shift vertically. I've got to be vertically consistent as I come 
around the head. See how easy this is to create this faded shape? Look what I'm doing. Now, I have a level underneath this now, down here, that I'm gonna have to blend off, but I know that this portion right here, there's a little bit of weight right there, but I'm gonna be able to gut that out consistently in just a little bit. But notice how I come around the head with this. And I'm gonna get a good, nice, even, consistent taper all the way around this fella. I notice there's a lot more hair coming off on this side. This is the side that was longer that needed to have a lot more hair cut off because the haircut wasn't, the haircut he came in with, that we started with, was not symmetrical. No worries. I'm a right-handed hair cutter, so I'm proceeding around that head. Now I'm going back and I'm just polishing. I'm catching anything I missed. For those of you that are familiar with some of the haircutting technique that, I'm share, that I've shared, are you seeing a little bit of what we like to call revolution cutting? I would say that you are. We're revolving around the head here. Now, keep in mind, this particular client does not have real ears. So we are stuck working with the ears that he has brought us, meaning the ears that are in place on the client. I needed to take a little more on this side to balance with what we cut on the other. But notice I can see the hair to use as my guide. Now, I was cutting down to that 1 8 mark, so that's my number one guard. I'm going to go to my number one guard here, and I'm going to back off my blade just a little bit. And notice that blends right into the bottom of the section that I cut with my fade comb. And this is still borderline being a fade. This is still more of a tapered haircut. I think we could get into a discussion about that haircut length. Notice I'm guarding my guard. That's an important technique. I've got a fingertip on the guard at all times. If I'm gonna slip off of my head, if my guard's gonna pop off loose or wiggle, and I really have never had problems with the JRL guards, but I can't predict when I'm gonna have a problem, and I don't want a problem. So notice what I did here. I used my fade comb to rough in my basic fade, my basic tapered haircut, I used my zoot comb on the top of the head to do some of my layering. I used my curve comb on the top of the head to finish off my shape. Heads are curved, curved comb, use my curve comb. I used my fade comb to rough in my fade. Now I do have some blending to do right about there. Everybody sees it. I've got some blending to do. Anybody want to guess what I'm going to use to do my blending? I'm going to use a big red blending comb. This is called a big red. I love my big red blending comb. Left hand or right hand, hold it at an angle, clipper to triple zero, and look, this is used for my upper edge, my blending. At the top of my taper, see the weight? See the weight? See the weight? See the weight? See the weight go away? See the weight come off the head? See the weight get beautifully tapered? 
And this big red blending comb, guys, don't let it intimidate you. Don't let it scare you. It's a big red blending comb. It's like a big old clipper guard. It's a four and a three and a two. It's tapered. It's wedge shaped. So when I slide it in, the extent to which I slide it up will determine my tapering. Notice my clipper is moving parallel to the teeth, but the teeth are not straight up and down. The teeth are at an angle. That's why the handle is so critical. The teeth are at an angle. Look how easy it is to blend off there. See the weight line right there? See the heaviness right there? See what needs to be blended right there? Okay, so look how nice it came out. Look how beautiful that is. Might need a little bit of finesse with a blending scissor. Get out your Clipper Guy Classic Barber Blender. Switch to your Zoot Comb. And polish things up just a little bit. Look how nice and easy that is. Look how quick that can be. This is a really nice, really simple, really classic tapered men's high taper, short taper. We could even call it, let's turn it into a low fade. Now let's turn it into a low fade. We saw a lot of tools. We saw zoot comb with your guard. We saw curve comb. We saw fade comb. We saw a big red blending comb. And we ended up with a pretty sharp haircut. But what we need to do now is we need to tighten up the taper through the bottom here. We need to fade in the bottom edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to using our clipper directly on the client. Triple zero closer closed position. I'm going to slow my blade down. Nice slow blade speed for control. The 1040 from JRL is a five speed. So here we go. I want to do a low temple taper right here. I want a fader taper in the temple of the haircut. So I'm going to come in at an angle. See what I did here? I came in with my clipper at an angle. I want you to see what that looks like. Look at that side and look at that side. I want you to see what that looks like. What I've done is I've created an area right here that is a zero to taper up into that. Now I hope that you can see this on camera because I know this is a fine detail. I used my blade in the triple zero closer closed position. I'm going to open my blade up now to the number one position and I'm going to gut out or take off this bottom. And as I do that, I will acknowledge this is a little bit longer than that zero right there. I wanted to get everything out of the way. Now I'm going to close it up about halfway. because I'm aware that I'm starting to bump into that zero. Now I'm going to go to zero and I'm going to get in there at a deep angle. And one of the most important elements of this now becomes our fade brush. This is the last tool we're going to introduce. This is a fade brush and let's talk about what a fade brush does. When we use a fade brush, we ask a fade brush to do two things. We are either asking our fade brush to lift up the hair, to get the hair, what we call it, porcupined, to get the hair boink, to get the hair up and out and off of the head. Or we are asking a fade brush 
to clear away the clippings, to remove what's been cut so we can get a real good visual read on our haircut. These are what we call dual texture fade brushes. They come in a bunch of colors. They're soft and they're little and they're fun. And they're 100% fully sanitizable because they're hospital grade silicone. But they're dual texture. If you take your fingers and you feel them the short way, they're soft. But if you feel them the long way, they're stiff. Stiff, soft, coarse, fine. Flexible, not flexible, not flexible. Dual texture. So here's what we do with these. We use these when we fade. We use the firm direction to lift up the hair, to scuff up the hair, to get the hair up and out and off the skin so that we can fade. And typically, we've got one tool in either hand. We lift it, we work it, we lift it, we work it, we lift it, we work it, and then we go the short way. It's nice and soft to clear away the clippings so we can see or read our fade. I want you to see this corner now. Look at this corner that's been tapered in, and look what we faded in there. Look how nice and beautiful and soft and faded that is. Our fade brush helps to make that possible because it helps to control shorter lengths of hair. Whether we're lifting and scuffing, getting it up and off the head, or clearing clippings so we can truly read our fade. That there is a beautiful temple taper, a beautiful low fade in the corner. Do you know what I want to do? I want to do it again. So let's see what we're going to do. I'm going to use my fade brush to brush up that hair to get it standing up and out and off of the head on any texture of hair. Get it standing up and out and off the head. Go to triple zero, close or closed. Use your mirror. Use your mirror to gauge where that's going to happen. It's going to happen right about here. Coming in at that angle like that. At that angle. Now you remember we opened the blade up to gut out the area below that. Then we went to halfway to clean it up a little more. Then we went all the way closed to work low. And we're going to use our fade brush. We're going to use our fade brush to encourage that hair to come up and out and off of the head. And then we're going to use it to clear away the clippings. Soft side to clear away the clippings. Fade it in. Wipe it up. Get that hair to stick up. Long side, long side, long side. Short side, wipe away the clippings. And keep working that until we've got, oh, 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 look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that sharp? Isn't that looking good? Now, we can replicate that same exact thing through the bottom of the haircut. Let's do a little of that. Triple zero, closer, closed. We're going to come in through the bottom corner across the bottom through the bottom corner okay close the blade up this is a low fade low tapered haircut with a low fade through the perimeter. We'll go halfway. It's going to be one more click. Get your fade brush. Get your fade brush. Getting that hair sticking up. Wiping away clippings using the short side. Get those clippings gone. Close it all the way up. It's 
especially valuable to get some of that hair standing up and out in the way. These are golden for this, for really helping you see this and work with this. Closed up all the way, we go to a little bit of trimmer work. In the case of the mannequin, we got some finer hair along that perimeter. See, we can't be using a comb on this. A comb's not going to help us with this. No wonder he's wiggling on me. The base was not right. Okay, much better. Nice. But yeah, these, these little te dual texture fade brushes are priceless for this. I've got them in stock. I've got a whole bunch of different colors. They're sold in a two pack. You get them, I think they're two for 11 bucks plus shipping. They're soft and they're firm. They're lifting up the hair and clearing away the clippings to allow us to do some beautiful, beautiful tight faded work. We're just wrapping up our hour here. I appreciate you guys tuning in, checking in, and being here with me today. Boy, we covered a lot today. It's back. I feel like we've kind of gone a little retro with these classes where we've been sharing a lot of business lately. Some of the classes have been uh, a little shorter because, man, once we cover the topic, let's just get out there and execute. We're back at our salons. People are busy. Our shops are hopping. But I'm still here to help you. I'm still here with programming. We talked zoot comb. We talked curve comb. We talked fade comb. We talked big red blending comb. And, of course, we talked about our dual fade brushes. Go online, get yourself some tools, ivanzoot.com is where you go, and let me help you master some of these skills. Let me help you build and grow your business. And all month this month, we're talking about July 1, Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. Thank you so much for being here. Reach out to me. It's Wednesday, so there's a meeting tonight at 8 p.m. on my Ivan Zoot team page on Facebook. It's not on Zoom this week. We're actually going to be going this week to the new rooms function on Facebook groups. So that's where you'll find us this week uh, for our meeting, which is coming up tonight at 8. So, I got a busy day. I know you got a busy day. I look forward to hearing from you here. I look forward to helping you here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being with us. Remember, this video will be available all day on replay until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.